right. Williams, welcome to Hot Topics. Well, thank you so much. Thank this you. This has been a whirlwind. Tell me what you've gone through. I mean, we've seen it in the media, you know, the YouTube, and then you made your rounds on every morning network show. Yeah, well, I tell you, first of all, it was January 4th that all of this uh, came into existence, you mm -hmm. know, from the time that it was a morning, it was a, a call that Monday, I mean, that Tuesday morning. Ted, you know, listen, there's a local radio station trying to find you. You know, are you the guy with the golden voice? And Who I'm told like, you yeah. that? A uh, very dear friend of mine, Mark mm -hmm. Henderson, as a matter of fact, um, he called me up on my phone and I was getting ready. I had a little cheap little Net 10 phone and um, uh, not plugging Net 10, but you know, that's what I had. And uh, he called me and said, there's a radio station, man, trying to find you. And so I'm like, really? And so they gave me the, num the particulars. Now, his, fr his friend's mother is the one who actually was listening to that morning show that morning. And um, called me up. I called the station. First person I call immediately because I'm thinking, wow, I finally got a prayer answered. Not many prayers, but one prayer. Lord, you're putting me back in radio. So when they told me a radio program, I'm thinking, like, this is my opportunity. I'm going to mm -hmm. get a radio job again, you know? Unbeknownst to me, it was television and all of these YouTube hits that, uh, you know, I don't know where it all came from. You know, I just had no inclination at all of, as to how it, it was uh, posted, you know, what any of the hits meant. Or Do you anything. remember doing that? Uh, yeah, that little video? interview, the initial interview. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a situation where that same gentleman, his name is uh, Doral Chenoweth, and he was a web designer for the uh, uh, local newspaper, the Columbus mm -hmm. Dispatch. And he asked me, he said, Ted, he said, do you mind if I just do a little, a little interview with you, man? He said, because this is amazing how you're out here daily and you're always gracious enough to give us all this when you're listening to nothing but, you know, and, and I said, sure, you know, because he was going to give me a couple dollars, you yeah. know, and that's all I was concerned about was, am I going to get a couple dollars from this deal? You know, and yeah, I'll give you a couple dollars, you know, no problem. Well, he went on and did the initial shoot and Never heard from him again. You know, he gave me his card, mm -hmm. but what was I going to call this guy? Hey, man, is anything, you know, happening with that thing you did? You know, so I it didn't. I was more concerned with my uh, commitment to God, you know, because my, my commitment to God was to s stop stealing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Phil brought it out that I have uh, a track record of, of theft and so forth. So I was, uh, I had my demons that I was fighting with. But at the same time, I was, uh, I was acknowledging God on a daily basis. I had a communication, a line of communication with God, and that was my commitment was to stand out there and just have a, a natural conversation with him and, and, and laugh at the people that didn't give me no money and, mm -hmm. and be grateful for the people that did and then treating them both the same. God bless you to all of you, the people that gave and the people that didn't give. And when I would get on my knees at night, I would also pray that way. I would say, thank you, Lord, for the people that did give and God bless the people that didn't give. Because one of the things that God revealed to me at that point was that I can't change the, the will of these people mm -hmm. to give you. Otherwise, you'd be a rich man. You know what I mean? But it has to be from their heart. And, yeah. Well, we, we, you know, saw you on every media outlet. And obviously, these demons you talk about that you have to deal with personally are mm -hmm. coming out. So everyone knows about that. How difficult is it to deal with these things that... You know, as a person, right. it's just hard to deal with, but now everyone knows. But right now, I'm living in a, in a sober living home mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, and, um, you know, we're addressing my addictions and, 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 and the process of getting clean and sober. Mm -hmm. So I go to meetings and so forth, and I have a great uh, crew with me. Both of them are clean and sober. And, you know, we do what we can to uh, keep me grounded in terms of doing that first and foremost. You know, we heard that you went to rehab and then, uh, well, no. you know, left early. Why did you do that, and what is the difference of rehab and sober living? Actually, sober living is a little more, uh, uh, less restraining. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows me to go out in the community and attend meetings, and I can go to work as well. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much of what I wanted to do in the beginning. But Dr. Phil had offered me this grand place of uh, recovery, which was down in South Padre Island, Texas. And so I took the opportunity of that as well. But leaving early, I found that it was... Uh, uh, in that in that in that uh, situation, I was doing phone-ins, you know, calling from recovery. Hi, Dr. Phil. You know, I'm and, and I'm not knocking Dr. Phil right. for anything. I love Dr. Phil. You know, his his concerns and his his caring nature will not go in vain. You know, I'm going to definitely try to do what he had tried to initially get from me. 
Well, since your discovery, we heard about all these job offers you got. What okay. were some of the biggest offers and did you take them? Well, actually, the Kraft macaroni and cheese, you know, that was uh, probably the biggest highlight of it all. And then, of course, with the Cleveland Cavs and then uh, Mr. Donald Trump had offered me a, a home uh, in New York, you know, so uh, uh, Kraft is probably the biggest, uh, uh, most lucrative at this point. But my manager is fielding many other offers as well. But um, I do have a voiceover agent. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to working with him and going out on some auditions and possibly doing some more national spots. As you can see, I got a nice teeth now. So I'm learning to talk with them and, and try to, you know, do commercials and so forth. And we just heard that you just landed a new reality show. Tell me about that. Yes, I have a reality show, a book, and uh, uh, a, um, a movie deal mm -hmm. that's all being uh, worked out by a, a, a big top three agency in, in California. And the reality show would consist of, uh, my concept for a part two of the show, would it be to go around the United States and possibly the globe, giving people a second chance. And I have a website, you know, goldenvoiceradio.net, uh, and uh, you click on charities, and I want people to more or less give any type of donations that they can, so that I could take those monies and go around giving people a second chance, as God has so free-heartedly blessed me with. Now, before you mentioned that, you know, you were on the side of the street asking for change. Mm -hmm. Now you have these offers. You have a new reality show. Uh -huh. How much money are you making and what are you going to do with that money? Right now, uh, again, giving people second chances with money. And I guess I would say this charity begins at home. I have a mm -hmm. lot of kids that are looking for their little handouts in this whole thing. Like, Daddy, don't forget me, you know. Uh, so I'm definitely going to make sure that my kids have a, a few of their little uh, obstacles taken care of. But once that's all taken care of, um, I'm gonna you know, make sure that I give back. You know, I, th that is my primary purpose, is to get uh, grounded with the Second Chance Foundation. I am looking very, very forward to working with that uh, 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 cause of giving people second chances. What is your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal? Uh, wow, that's a, that's a heavy question. My ultimate goal is to uh, be president of my own radio station or television station. That's my ultimate goal. And to make my family happy. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to see that their dad didn't give up in spite of all the, the hideous, unhealthy mouth that I had and the crazy hairdo. You know, God seen fit for it. My ultimate goal is to serve the purpose of God's whole wish in this. But I would like to have my own radio station. Does that which I do have. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's an internet radio station. But, uh, but you know, clear wave would, would, would be all right. Does your experience of being on the street and having an addiction, how is that helping you right now, that experience? Uh, it's, it's making me acknowledge the Lord's uh, um, presence in my life right now, you know, and, and, and how he is really trying to help me, you know, um, overcome some of these demons that surface minute by minute, mm -hmm. I have to admit. It's, uh, you know, everybody says stay clean and sober one day at a time. Sometimes for me it's a minute at a time. You know, that I have to not think that I can do this and, and without doing that, and, you know, doing the other. So it's still a struggle. It, yeah, yeah. It's a, it, one day at a time, in my case, one minute at a time. Now, everyone's talking about Charlie Sheen right now. Okay. <laughs> and have you seen any of his recent interviews? Uh, a few of them, yes. And, you know, he um, says he was addicted and said he cured himself with his mind. What do you yeah. think about what's going on? Charlie has his struggles just like I have mine. I'm sure he'll work them out. I'm sure he will. I have faith in him to, that he'll do that. You know, um, everybody just wants to get to the dirty side of, of, of things, just like myself. You know, Dr. Phil revealed all of my skeletons, you know, and that's what they're trying to do. You know, the, no one's a judge. Nobody can judge anybody, you know, in Hollywood or out of Hollywood. You shouldn't uh, uh, talk to people with a, uh, already a judgment preconceived of, of where they're going with their sobriety. They don't know the struggles of Charlie Sheen and his family issues and all. But Charlie's a little abrasive at this whole recovery issue, and I, I think he needs to back away from that. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's holier than thou in that area because he does have an addiction problem, whether it's alcoholism or his other drugs of choice. You know, but I wish him well. Last question, what do you want everyone to know about you? I want everyone to know that I never gave up hope and I had an ongoing dialogue with God. And that's what I want everybody to continue. Whether they feel hopeless or whatever, um, just keep an ongoing dialogue, you know, and be grateful, have something, 
something to be grateful for each day. If it's nothing other than just waking up, thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to know about me is that I'm grateful for so many things that I've taken for granted in the past. Who is, one more question. Okay, I, I was going to say, no. Who is your rock and how do you make sure you surround your self with people who are going to take care of you when you might slip and fall and just are there for you for the right reason? Well, I've got some great people in the voiceover community whom I look up to mm -hmm. uh, as mentors, you know, because as I mentioned to you a little while ago pr uh, prior to the, the tape rolling, um, I'm not very much of an on-camera person and, and never thought of myself as much. But, um, you know, radio, you know, is, is behind the scenes. You can, you know, get, get grounded in, in, I'm just happy with radio, you know. So um, I have people in that. And then, of course, my, my, my two staff members, uh, Al Battle, Eric Harding, who is my bodyguard. I got a bodyguard these days. <laughs> so, um, you know, they, they keep me grounded. And, and, and they're both um, um, clean and sober. So, you know, they, they, they see the, the little struggles that my mind go through. And from time to time, they'll tap me and say, Ted, are you all right? Ted, are you all right? And that means a lot to have somebody frequently with you saying, Ted, are you all right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, like reality check, you know, time check, that kind of thing, because I have thoughts, not of using, but I have so many thoughts, you know, coming here today. Mm -hmm. I had like five or, or six different interviews and, 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 and drops and this and that, and, you know, from time to time. And they both look, you all right? You all right? And, and I know that any time I say that I'm not, they'll cut everything short. You know, let's get him off. He's working too hard. You know what I mean? So because uh, I, I don't think I can take very much more of this mm -hmm. big, overwhelming experience. Yeah. That was wonderful. So nice meeting you. True.